Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of personal financial literacy, balancing a check register. This is standard 6.14c in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 36 off the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on our own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So when you have a checking account, then you will most likely have a check register. Now the funny thing about our check registers are is that a lot of people don't actually use checks anymore. Checks are little pieces of paper that you can give to a store and they will take that as payment even though they won't cash the check and get their money for several days. You still have a checking account, but most people just use the debit card because debit cards are kind of act like credit cards in regards that they're accepted everywhere, but they're different because they're tied straight to your checking account. So it's still called a check register, but most likely you won't be using any checks. But you still need to keep up with how much money you have in your account. So. We have this little story here. Before Nina bought groceries on April 22nd, so we're referencing this right here, she had a balance of 487.25. So you notice we have three different columns here. And we have the deposits, we have the withdrawals, and we have the balance. And it says dollars underneath each one just because you notice we're not going to include the dollar sign on every single one. That would just kind of make things a little bit messy. So she had 487.25. That's her balance. So the balance is how much money you have in the bank, in your checking account at any given point. Now, she had a few transactions. So transactions are either deposits or withdrawals, pluses or minuses. Deposits can be anything like you take 20 bucks and you go put in the bank an ATM. It could also be Sometimes a refund, if you take something back to the store, they will give you a deposit back on the same card that you used to purchase it. Sometimes if you have a paycheck, it might be a direct deposit. Withdrawals can be using your debit card, using a check, um, pulling money out of the ATM. just depends on whether your deposits are going into the bank, withdrawals, money's coming out of the bank. So what we do here is we do a little subtraction here. So let's see what this balance is after we buy our groceries. So we're going to write over here to the side 487.25. That's the current balance. And then we're going to say, all right, in order, first we have the groceries, then the cash deposit. How much does she have left? Well, we're going to withdraw 72.50. Because she spent $72.50 at the store for groceries. Don't know how she paid for it, whether it's debit card, check. But that's what she did. So we're going to subtract here, basic subtraction. And so we're going to have to make sure we borrow. Let's make sure we get our decimal down here. Because if you mess up on your subtraction, everything else kind of gets messed up. All right, so we have got $414.00 and 75 cents. So what we do is we take that and we write that right underneath. That's our new balance. And you bring this balance down every single day for every single transaction. And every time you have a new transaction, either deposit or withdrawal, you have to calculate a new balance. And so whatever's in this third column is going to be the current state of your checking account, how much money you have left. So we subtracted 72.50, but now let's go ahead and add in that $15. Because we had a cash deposit, let's make sure we line it up with our decimals. It's 15.00. That's going to be important. 75. 9. Looks like we've got 429.75. And that's it. That's what they're asking for is the balance at the end of April 23rd. So it's this 429.75. There is no A, B, C, or D for us to choose from. So we would just have to bubble this into the answer document, 429.75.